Monster. We are back, and holy crap, it took me a while to get to this one. Uh, so, what the hell is this ad doing here? Goddamn bleeding cool, I swear. Anyway, a comic store that over five ordered not one, not two, not three, not even four, but five. Five hundred copies of Marvel's New Warriors number one. Get that off there. Unfortunately, I have to be on Bleeding Cool to look at this. But anyway. <clears throat> Marvel Comics is, pub is planning to publish publishing New Warriors, a five-issue miniseries written by Late Show. Written by the Late Show with Stephen Colbert, writer and producer Daniel Kibblesmith. Yeah, um, let's see. I stopped watching the Late Show when Stephen Colbert got on because... Uh, let's just be frank, Dave was better at it. Dave was way better at it than, than he was, and he was actually willing to take on people. Uh, yeah, actually, that... I mean, Dave was actually the guy... Dave did it the first time at the Late Show, and he was willing to go out there and pick a fight with... You know, he was willing to make jokes about Bill Clinton back when you didn't get suicided for making jokes about Bill Clinton. Um... Yeah, so <laughs> Stephen Colbert, no, he he just goes with whatever the party lines are, and it doesn't make for good commentary because if you're not able to, if you don't feel like you can, you know, make fun of people, make fun of your own group, then uh, there might be something wrong with that group. But going on, the team is made up of all new heroes with a diverse range of backgrounds, including two called Safe Space and Snowflake. And for those who y'all that saw that one video I did about that, that is a train wreck right there. Okay, that is, uh, that was Mistress One Trick Pony and Captain Meat Shield. Uh, but ba basically, safe, safe Space and Snowflake. Uh, safe Space power was he could put force fields around everybody but himself. And Snowflake could only generate Snowflake shurikens made of ice. Which has some pretty limitate, which is pretty limiting when you stop and think about it. But, anywho. For some people, this is the worst thing in the world. It is a terrible comic, even though no one has read it, as it hasn't even been printed. And apparently is responsible for the entire edifice of the comic industry collapsing. No, no, no. It's not responsible for it. This is where Rich Johnson kind of jumps the shark a bit. He makes a lot of assumptions here real quickly. We're no one in Comicsgate is saying that Safe Space and Snowflake or the new New Warriors is responsible for the collapse of the comic industry. We're saying it's a symptom of what caused it. Okay? You get a cold, and usually it's, it's not... The sniffles and cough isn't what's causing you problems. What's causing you the pro... Those are just symptoms of the underlying... Overlying... Wow, my tongue just will not work today. <laughs> That's just nuts. You know, wind that thing back up. Ah, anywho. It's not a... It, it's mostly the underlying symptom of it, okay? You got a, a cold or something or an infection in your body. It's either being caused by in a, a bacterial infection usually or a you've been infected with a virus, all right? It does not mean that you don't treat all the symptoms unless the symptoms are life-threatening, but you also need to put like an antiviral medication or an antibiotic in there. Simply giving uh, cough medication for bacterial pneumonia, you're probably going to die of the bacterial pneumonia while taking the cough syrup all the time because it's, it's only going to treat the symptom and the symptom is not part of the underlying factor. The underlying factor is you guys over at Marvel end up screwing crap up so much you want a virtue signal and, and make everything diverse but you don't want to do any hard work in writing okay uh there are plenty of black characters you can pull from there are plenty of young uh diverse characters in marvel that you can pull from the problem is you don't want to use those because you have an inherent bias towards the people who originally wrote them because a lot of those men were white men and you disavow that. Marvel also runs some pretty racist practices. They're they're the kind of company that sits back and they if there's a character that needs to be wrote, they will go find someone who is like that character. Riri Williams uh, was written by a 
they, they eventually had her written by a black woman, which who looked like her, which kind of worked out because I think Brian Michael Bendis was working on her and he, he just kind of fucks everything up. He's, he's around nowadays. A man's a, uh, has been, but you also have uh, like America Chavez. I think had Gabby Rivera, who was a Latino lesbian. And that's, that's about how Marvel is going when it was a character of a certain race and everything else that only that one person can write it. And usually they go out, then they base their hiring practice on whether or not you either look like or act like the character. And I'm sorry, Robert Derry Jr. may act like Tony Stark, but I think even he would sit back and say he would be pretty bad at writing an Iron Man book. It's not something he would probably want to do because it's not it's not his wheelhouse. Okay, his wheelhouse is an as an actor. He might write a little bit, but comic writing is kind of its own craft to an extent. You have to remember you're more you have to write it as more of a visual medium than a story medium. But uh yeah, it's this is not um as other people hate the comic because it has diverse characters in it. We hate the comic because it is blatant tokenism and pandering to one type of group. Okay, you're you're going out there and you're trying to make characters to hit every air. And plus, they I went through the characters. The only one that had any kind of real solid background was the B negative character. Because and second to them, actually, Snowflake and Safe Space could be uh, set up as type of mutants. After that, it just got absolutely stupid. Um, there's one kid in there. Uh, I can't remember who he was. Screen Time, I think, was his name. And he got his powers from his father's internet gas. And I'm, I mean, uh, yeah. How how do you do internet gas is what I'm trying to figure out. And then you have uh, the apparently the leader of the group. Uh can't remember what her name was because it's kind of forgetful, but her power was basically she stole Dora the Explorer's backpack and she had that with her. She had a magical backpack. Anybody could use the magical backpack, by the way. There was nothing about the magical backpack that made her special. She just happened to have access to it. Okay. <laughs> but the stupid part about it, I, and like I said, the characters really didn't make much sense and the designs were oh, god awful. Uh, screen time looked like, uh, Ben 10 rip off the, uh, the chick with a backpack really looks like an obese door. The Explorer safe space and snowflake looked like, um, how do I put this tokenized wonder twins that have been gender swapped. I mean, you, geez, you have a chick here. Here's what annoys the fuck out of me. You have an opportunity because in the new Warriors, there's a character named Night Thrasher who is basically a, a body armored martial artist, pretty much. I don't think Night Thrasher has any real superpowers. I haven't studied the character very much. But as far as I can tell, he's an armor plated ninja, pretty much. You've got Safe Space and Snowflake. You could armor the hell out of Safe Space because he can't protect himself. You know, give him some heavy body armor and make him look like a monster. Pretty much, you know, just not like a monster monster, just like a beast. Okay. Like I'll almost give him like Thor's physical form, but also give him like some heavy armor for self, for his own defense. And then you could take Snowflake and you have an opportunity for Marvel to practically rip off Katana from Mortal Kombat, the old version of Katana, mind you. But you know, Marvel probably doesn't have the balls to do the thong leotard like they did back with, uh, oh, what was it? Psylocke? who had the thong leotard back in like the 80s and 90s, which is what attracted a lot of guys to... Si Damn, I, li I ended up having a fetish for Asian chicks when I saw that... Ch when I saw Psylocke jumping around with a katana and, you know, thigh highs and... Damn! Hey, <laughs> shit. That that was one... Of that Psylocke was one of the characters I liked seeing in the X-Men comics. Uh, that Logan and uh, Havoc. Havoc was actually kind of interesting to watch but or read. But anyway, like I said, uh, this idea that uh, th this is apparently responsible, you're, you're jumping the shark really hard. But I mean, it's so stupid because we're kind of living in this society now 
where this dude has gone out and he orders 500 of these things. Which, if you look on here, it even says a trailer, a, tra a video trailer from for the comic from Marvel has been downvoted 226,000 times as opposed to the 4,000 upvotes. People really just don't like this idea. Another thing was in the video, there was a guy, the guy that wrote, that was writing it, said he saw the New Warriors as too cool for him to read. And I'm just looking at like, really? Um, like I don't smoke, but from what I understand, most people get into smoking because they want to be cool. Like the older kids. Me, I, I understood the health complications. Like, yeah, I want to keep my lung capacity. Oh, dear God. This is just freaking hilarious. Naturally, there have been dozens of YouTube videos <laughs> from the usual suspects, myself included, mocking the very existence of this comic and claiming and blaming all. No, no, no. We're not blaming all the industry's ills on it. We're saying this is the final. This is the symptom of a terminal problem. A curable problem. It like what? Uh, what was it? Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt came in there during World War Z and he said, "Give me something terminal but curable. Your disease right now is terminal to the industry. It's going to kill it. It's the reason why a Corona. It's the reason why this virus has devastated the comic industry so bad because this is a terminal illness you have. However." You can cure this. You are just refusing the chloroquine that will cure the problem. Okay? It'll make it easier. Dear God. Something I thought was amusing, considering an early example from the mid-70s of low-selling comics that replaced all of its members for new characters as requested by the company's internal sales department, including controversial heroic leads, depictions of Germans, Japanese, and Russians that seemed to work out. Well, it worked out because back then those people were our enemies and it kind of, Stanley kind of done that. Stanley was a guy that looked for the good in people. I believe he also was a member of the armed forces. And one of the things that guys in the armed forces will tell you, they said, you don't get mad at the people. You always inevitably get mad at the government that those people are under when you go to war. So those characters that came in, a lot of them, you, you've kind of felt for them because you're like, wow, they're, they're under the thumb of somebody. I mean, who has not been under the thumb of a dumbass boss? Probably some people at Bleeding Cool and Rich, probably some people under Rich Johnson at Bleeding Cool. <sighs> the mocking continued reaching an apogee, oh, just say ethos or some nonsense, dude, apogee in the Joe Rogan Experience TV, TV show. Are you serious? Bleeding cool. The Joe Rogan Experience is a podcast, you dipshit. Oh, my God. Oh. Bleeding cool keeps losing its credibility with me. Oh, my God. In a section labeled, Joe Rogan learns about the most SJW comic book ever made, racking up another three quarters of a million views on YouTube alone because it sucks. Okay. It sucks. I need to watch this. <laughs> I have yet to see it. I haven't seen that yet. I didn't know he did that. Now it's not like the criticism is all one-sided. Rogan says he can't believe the comic is not a parody. Yeah. We can't believe it's not a parody either. And that there are a number who believe it is. These are from folks you really better be Southern to be using folks, man. All right. You, you really got to be Southern to use that. Never mind. Less than like folks, less than likely to make YouTube videos about it at all, but they see the Marvel comics PR for New York, New Warriors as looking like they are mocking diverse comics or looking like super bigoted parody of diverse hero comics. Well, you know, Here's the thing, when you when you start going in there and you have the belief that the world is defiantly against black people, let me let me let me explain the problem with SJW logic when it comes to diversity. Okay. SJW logic when it comes to diversity is that white people can do anything and every other race has to have help. 
in its most basic format, it's white man better than anyone else. It is blatant white supremacy. Pure and simple. You have you have gone all the way around the spectrum and co- of racism and come right back to white supremacy on the opposite end. Okay, you've got to get in the middle somewhere. All right, you, you've got you've got to look at it as all are equal. And if someone has a problem, that is kind of their fault. You can't blame it on everyone else, just as Sylvester Stallone says. You don't blame it on everybody else. It's not about how hard you get hit. It's about how hard you get hit and knocked down, but you get back up. And here we go. But uh, hey, you know, our, our comic fans are just all racist, all bigoted, all sexist, all homophobic. That's who we are as comic fans. I've halfway thought about just owning that shit and just going on. Well, Kibble Smith's history as a satirical writer, oh, producer on Stephen Colbert, as underlining that for some. Oh, so the guy that did this is also a satirical. Ah, uh, that yeah, that makes sense. Y'all probably should have picked somebody else. Richard Myers would have been better because he absolutely loves Night Thrasher. Richard Myers would have been awesome. I, I challenge Marvel to just give new warriors to Richard. That's what they should do. I mean, that, that's the problem with the industry nowadays. We don't have these bets. You know, you don't have those outrageous bets people take like in Rocky. Okay, Apollo Crews takes this outrageous idea of he'll fight anybody because he thinks he's the best. It's like you get this really good fight because Rocky's a dude that under normal circumstances would never get a shot. But he gets a shot because this guy, because Apollo will take on anyone. But Marvel, Marvel needs to grow some balls, you know, and take some, take, take some bets, you know. Comics Gate needs to bet them. You know, we could make a better New Warriors comic than you could. We'll put both the New Warriors comics out there on the shelves. We all know how this is going to end, though. <laughs> we, all, we all know that, that Marvel's going to lose that bet and Comics Gate's going to win it. So they're like, no, we're not going to do that. Why? Because Comics Gate's going to win. Uh, new Warriors, new opportunities. However, one comic book retailer has seen an opportunity. Ah, here we go. The guy that bought 500. Lawrence Dockery of Larry's Comics Incorporated in Massachusetts sees things very differently. Politically, Larry is generally on the conservative side of American politics. I don't believe this. <laughs> I do not believe this. If he is, he's a self-hating white person. That's got to be what it is. He's got to he's got to feel bad about the success he's gotten. He's the kind of person who some might caricature as being against the existence of such a comic. But what Larry cares most about is whether he can sell the comic or not. He saw those million views on YouTube and is enthusiastically supporting Marvel Comics' decision to still publish the comic. Okay. You see... Okay, he says no press is bad press. Marvel's upcoming title, New Warriors, has been taking a beating on social media and beyond. One posting has over 100,000 downvotes. There are way too many eyes on this title for me to dismiss it. My opinion, fans are going to be able, are going to be able to not take a peek that, take a peek. It's that car crash you pass by on the highway, you try not to look, but you just have to. I ordered 500 first issues. I like my chances. Here's the problem with this. Back in the day, before uh, comic book YouTubers, you probably could get away with that. But most people nowadays, they figure out whether something's worth buying um, by who's on the internet reviewing it. Same thing with uh, video games. Same thing with products. People go online to YouTube. They find someone who's a regular person, reviews the comic, and you've got hundreds of people like that in Comicsgate. Uh, hey, Richard Myers alone is going to deter a lot of people if it's a bad comic. If it comes out and it's actually good, like... The only way this comic can be saved is if it comes out as a parody. If they come out and say, oh, you know, it's it's kind of a parody against the comic industry, that motherfucker would sell like nobody's business. And you actually include um, diversity jokes and everything else. The problem is you don't have, like, I'll tell you what, if you put Ron White writing it, you might get there. George Carlin writing it could probably sell it. Uh, the guy that done the comic and thinks that they're too cool for him Unless it really is a parody and Marvel's trying to make it serious so they, they're, because they're afraid of the Twitter backlash, uh, 
I, I don't see a point in buying it. In fact, I won't even take a risk on some things because like most Americans who are buying, who like comic books, my finances are finite. Okay, I'll probably end up with an extra 20, 25, 50 bucks at the end of the month to buy stuff with. And I usually have now kind of taken all that, com- what would have been comic book money, and kind of rolled it over into Indiegogo comics or into indie comics in general. I don't feel the need to go out there and produce trash or buy trash from Marvel that they produce and bring it in and waste my money on it. Uh, I did end up at one point in time buying the. Um, Actually, I did buy the, uh, what is it? It's completely ignited series. Uh, I think like the first four issues because I wanted to, because I was looking through it. Cause it one, it was like, everyone talked about all the stuff about the gun stuff, but I was sitting there thinking someone who's this uneducated on guns has got to have fucked up somewhere inside the book and holy shit. Are there things in this book that shows that the person who wrote it knows nothing about firearms whatsoever? I've got to do a book on it as a firearms enthusiast, not as a comic writer, not as a comic book guy, but as a firearms enthusiast, I have to do a video on the Ignited series. But this guy basically thinks it's going to be so hated that people are going to buy, are going to hate buy it, or they're going to buy it to see how bad it is. This works. Like I said, if people don't have an idea of what's uh, in the book, they're going to get an idea from Richard Myers, Ethan Van Skyver. Clownfish TV may do a review on it. Just some guy is going to rip it to shreds if it's not parody. Your only hope of this selling, in my opinion, is this is all parody. That's, that's your only hope, in my opinion. Anyway, like I said, um, buying 500 copies of this is not something I would have done. Anyway, folks, tell me what you think in the comments about this guy. Uh, oh, boy. I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is shit right here. Uh, this, is, this is one of the things that's going to end and end. Uh, I, th- I think this guy is going to lose his money on this, and you're going to be stuck with 500 issues of crap. That the only, the only problem I see with Marvel is that they don't print in newsprint anymore, so you can't even use it as decent toilet paper. Anyway, I'm the last writer, folks. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel, and hit that bell for notification. Also, be safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video.